What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma. If you're new here and I love to talk about all things Peloton cycling and fitness. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I post every single Sunday and today's video should be a fun one. I'm going to be reviewing Core Power Yoga, which is a boutique fitness studio in the city. They also have chains a lot of places. I feel like this is a pretty big chain boutique fitness studio. And as you can guess, they focus on offering yoga classes. So I've been interested in finding a yoga studio that I like in the city. I don't need to go frequently, but I do think that yoga is really one of the biggest things that I benefit from having other people in the room with me. I get motivated when I see people that are really good at yoga, like doing cool yoga moves. I really like that. And then I also like having an instructor that can correct me if I have improper form, because even though I've been doing yoga for quite some time now, a couple years, I am not the perfect yogi. So it's nice to get that live feedback. And sometimes I feel like I don't buy into like all the meditation stuff that's with yoga in Peloton because I'm alone. I can kind of skip through it. But when you're in a studio, you got to do it. So I don't know. I feel like I benefit from in-person yoga classes. So it's been something I'm interested in. And Core Power Yoga offers a free week if you've never done it before. So my plan of attack this week is to take as many different yoga classes from Core Power Yoga, see if I like it, see if I vibe, and then decide if I want to like continue doing this on more of an ad hoc basis. I don't know. I really like yoga and I kind of want to get back into it. I really, really enjoyed when I was a member of Equinox doing yoga in their studio. I just felt like it was a really good workout like mentally and physically. So today is Saturday morning and I'm going to be doing my first yoga class and it's actually a yoga sculpt class at 9 a.m. The description of yoga sculpt is when muscles meet yoga, yoga sculpt is born. Boost metabolism and build lean muscle mass as you move to upbeat tracks. You'll combine free weights with core power yoga two sequencing and cardio to intensify each yoga pose while mixing in strength training moves like squats, lunges, and bicep curls. Poses often include warrior two with weights, push up or plank, sculpt series with weights, and wide arm row in crescent or chair. So this is not really like a straightforward yoga class. It's kind of like yoga strength. And I'm interested to see how this compares to Peloton yoga strength classes that I've taken in the past. There's also a note that the studio environment sweat level is two and it includes added heat. So I don't know if this is also a hot yoga situation. I've only done hot yoga once and I was a sweaty mess. So I'm definitely curious how this will go. I do feel like Yoga Sculpt is their most popular offering. I've heard a lot of people talk about it and kind of say that that's their favorite class they do. I honestly would have preferred to do just a normal yoga class today to like start out, but this is the one that fits into my schedule. I will say I am just so used to Peloton because you can just choose anything you want whenever you want, which is like so nice when going to a studio, you got to do it on their time. But I'm still very excited to try this class today and I appreciate that they kind of put in a lot of effort to like let you know what to expect. Like I have a pretty good idea of what's going to happen in this class. It says the intensity is moderate and it's best for all levels, which is interesting because this sounds kind of hard, but we'll see and to bring a bottle of water, a towel, and a yoga mat, and to wear workout clothes. So I got my workout clothes on. I'm bringing a yoga mat and a yoga towel mat, so a towel that goes over my entire yoga mat, because if there's gonna be heated yoga, I'm gonna sweat so much and I'll be slipping and sliding, so I need that towel. And then I'm bringing a sweat towel because if you watch my other videos, you know I get sweaty very easily, so I need to have all of the towels. And then finally, I'm bringing a bottle of water, but that's pretty much it. I'm very curious to see how this goes. So let's go to the yoga studio and knock out my first yoga sculpt class. I just got out. I was so sweaty. I'm just so sweaty even now. We will regroup, but first I need to shower. I was so sweaty. I came right home, showered, immediately made a cure hydration, which is just like a liquid multiplier 
because I sweat so much in that class. I'm like, I need some hydration. And now we're going to recap the class. So I got there around 15 minutes early, which is what they said. And the check-in person was basically like, great, lockers are there, bathrooms and showers are over there. And then that's the studio we're going in because they do have multiple studios, which is nice because then they can offer like a lot of different classes and the class times can overlap. But essentially locked myself away. They gave me a lock, which is nice. And then went into the room and set up. There were like a couple other people that came as early as me. So it was nice. I don't think that they were all new. It is nice to get into the room because this is heated yoga. So it was definitely nice to get there early and adjust to the temperature a little bit. But I will say by the time we started, I was already sweating from literally doing nothing. I am a very sweaty person. So I knew this was going to happen. I had my yoga mat and then a yoga towel on top of the entire thing. And looking around, some people had that set up, but a lot of people didn't. And I'm like, I honestly don't know how they weren't slipping and sliding all over the mat because pretty much from like five to 10 minutes in till the end of class, I was dripping sweat. You could see the sweat running down my arms, running down my stomach and back. Like it was a very, very sweaty situation. I was dripping so much on my yoga towel. I took a video of the end to show how much sweat was on my mat that had soaked through the yoga towel. So it was very, very sweaty. Very happy that I had my headband to keep some of the sweat out of my face, but I was also using the side towel I brought. So just know if you're a very sweaty person like I am, bring a lot of towels. And then some people, I guess, just don't sweat a lot. So they did not need them, but I needed them. Once the class started, I would kind of divide it into like three main sections. So the first section was kind of what I was thinking it would be like the entire time. For the first half of part one, we just did like very basic body weight flow, just kind of warming up. It was very nice. We did a lot of forward folds, some balance work, like very basic, typical yoga, basically exactly what I think of. Then after the first 10 minutes, we started grabbing weights, you know, adding some shoulder presses, some pulses with the weights. It was definitely amping it up. This is really when I started to sweat and then never stopped. And it was essentially the same exact flow as we did before. So it was kind of cool. We like learned the flow, body weight, and then amped it up with weights. Then the second section, I would say, is way more focused on strength and cardio. We did a little bit of a cardio session, but it was very short, maybe like three to five minutes. And I wasn't a huge fan of that just because it's really, really hot. Like, I don't need to elevate my heart rate like crazy for no reason. Like, we did like butt kicks and high knees. That was very meh for me, but it was short. And I guess it was effective of getting my heart rate up. And then we started doing like more typical weighted moves. So when I signed in, she told me to take three and five pound weights. And I used five pounds for the majority of the movements. I just followed if the instructor was using the heavier weights, that's what I did. She called the, the heavier weights like sculpt weights, which makes sense because they're a little bit harder. For the yoga flows, I did three pounds, but then once we started getting into like chest presses and overhead presses, like I was using my five pound weights, which is pretty easy for me. When you think of like me doing a strength class, I would usually do like 20 pounds for shoulder presses. But when it's really, really hot and your heart rate is elevated and you're also like holding lunges while doing these shoulder presses, like even the five pounds feels hard. I definitely had to take some breaks, but we really got a lot of great arm movements in. We did like lateral raises, shoulder presses, chest presses, a lot of tricep work. It all felt like very good. The legs, I would say we touched on less. We did do a lot of like squatting and lunges but that's pretty much it. And we also did pulsing wall squats, which was probably the hardest move for me. That was really, really killer. And then the last part also was kind of split up. So the first part of the last part was leg movements. So we did kind of hit the legs more than. She said you could use weights, but I did not. We were doing things like fire hydrants, which I find very hard just on their own. And then being in a tabletop position and like kicking one of your legs behind you, Little movements, but they burn. Then we did a quick little core segment, which, you know, towards the end of the class, I was feeling pretty dead, but we got through the core segment. That was definitely a little killer though. And then the last 10 minutes, we basically had a cool down. It was very nice, like some slow stretching, shavasana. I really appreciate it because I feel like sometimes with these studio workout classes, 
they just like don't emphasize cooling down at all or there's like not a big stretch part but I liked that this class was an hour long and the stretching was part of the class so it felt good we got out of there she turned down the heat in the studio I was feeling a little bit better and then I walked home I could have showered there but honestly at this point I just prefer to come home and like shower in my own shower and have my own space and now we're here overall it was not exactly what I was expecting. I definitely expected more flow with the weights, but I didn't hate it. Like I think that it was pretty enjoyable and it's something that I would be interested in doing again. My biggest thing is I don't know how beneficial it would be to be doing this long term. Like obviously if you enjoy it, do whatever exercise you enjoy because you will stick to the exercise you enjoy. But I don't feel like the moves were that hard. What made it hard is that you were doing it in a heated yoga studio. And I just don't really know the benefits of being in a heated studio. Like I sweat a lot and things feel harder. But in terms of like sculpting, I'm not sure like what benefit there is. But I am very curious. This was run really well. I like the instructor a lot. She really focused on like breathing in, breathing out. I was never confused like very easy to follow as somebody that has done yoga before. I think I would not take this as your first yoga class. It does come at you a little bit fast, but if you know the basics of yoga, like you would definitely be able to follow along. The instructor also gave a ton of modifications, which I appreciate. She gave modifications to make it easier. She gave modifications to make it harder. And I took both. Sometimes I wanted to be a little bit easier. Sometimes I felt like I could push myself more on the move. I just think the instructor was actually really good. I was very, very impressed. And I'm very interested to see if the instructor caliber will hold throughout the week because if so, I will be very impressed. So today I would give enjoyability like an 8.5 out of 10. I really enjoyed it. Difficulty, I would also give 8.5 out of 10. It felt difficult. I did take some breaks sometimes. One of my favorite things in a group studio class is when the instructor is just like calling out impossible stuff and like nobody is doing it, which definitely happened sometimes, but then she followed it up with some modifications we could do because you really had to like take your own breaks in this class. There were not a lot of opportunities that she was like, oh, like get water or towel off. But I just had to like take the break and then get back into it, which I kind of appreciate. I just like that you do it when you need it and like then get back into the flow. So a very good class today. And I'm very curious to see Core Power Yoga's other offerings. It is now Sunday around lunchtime. We're going to be doing an afternoon yoga class today. I did not feel sore at all today when I woke up, which is good. I wasn't really expecting it after yesterday's class. I feel like yesterday's class felt really hard in the moment because it was heated, but it actually like was pretty low impact, which no complaints here. It's always nice to wake up and not feel sore and be ready to get into another yoga class today. So today I'll be taking the 1 p.m. Core Power Yoga 2 class and essentially there's like core power yoga one which is more beginner oriented and it's not heated and then there is core power yoga two which they still claim is best for all levels but the intensity is moderate and it is heated so you know we're amping up the sweat a little bit. I expect to sweat a lot today, just like I did yesterday. The description of this class is turn stress into sweat. The signature class strengthens, balances, and detoxifies your entire body and mind as you move through more challenging postures and connected breath. Set to an energizing playlist, you'll power up your practice like never before. Poses often include Bird of Paradise C2 variations, inversion variations, warrior three variations, and revolved half moon variations. So just based on the poses listed, it does sound like it's going to be like a fairly hard yoga class. I really like that they kind of list what to expect and give concrete examples because I have like a very good idea of what this will look like now. But we'll go and see if that expectation meets reality. I am pretty excited. I really enjoyed yesterday's class and I'm excited to do some more heated yoga today. So let's walk to the studio and knock out this yoga class.
I did like that class. It was interesting though. So I got there and again, the instructor was so friendly. Like she could see that I was on my like free trial week. So she's like, oh, have you done, you know, yoga too here? And I'm like, no. And she's like, what classes have you done? And I'm like, sculpt. And she's like, okay, most people think that sculpt is harder than yoga too because yoga too has no weights. So yeah, basically you should be fine. We set the heat at like around 94 degrees, which is similar for Sculpt. And just go to Studio 2, like set your mat down, get ready. I did get there like around 15 minutes early just because I do have to walk there. So I'm like always worried that my walks will take longer, but you could get there later if you wanted to. But it is kind of nice to adjust to the heat in the studio especially since it's like 60 degrees outside now it's a little cold so it's nice to like have some moments before the class i just lay and like have my knees bent but just chill out and other people do that too i don't think that's like a weird thing so then the class started she said to get two blocks i have my mat i have my towel on top of my mat because i thought this was going to be a very sweaty situation but it honestly wasn't too sweaty. Like I definitely was sweating, but I feel like my headband did a pretty good job. And then I didn't sweat through my towel at all. And I didn't need like another towel. Like I bring a towel that I lay on my mat and then I have another towel to the side for my face. And I didn't need to use that at all because the moves just weren't that hard. So to start off the class, we did very basic like sun salutations, child's pose, you know, like very basic warm up. And then we got into two different flows. And I actually really like these flows. We did them slow on both sides and then we do them fast on both sides. So I feel like there was time to really understand the movements and then like have an opportunity to do it a little bit faster. It wasn't anything crazy, but there was a decent amount of balance work. We did warrior three. I forget what it was called, like ballet or dancer, where you like hold your foot behind you and balance on one foot. Definitely a lot of balance work. She did give us opportunity to do inversions as well, but essentially we were just doing legs apart, like forward fold. And then she's like, if you want to take the time to do inversions, you can. There was a girl in our class that was super good and was doing like inversions all the time. And that's like one of my favorite things. I love watching people that are really good at yoga do yoga. So I appreciated her. She was, you know, providing some entertainment for me. But yeah, I felt like the flows were good. I enjoyed them. They were pretty straightforward, but I do think if you're a beginner to yoga, you would probably benefit from doing yoga one first, which does make sense because these are more advanced moves. And I feel like the instructor didn't offer that many modifications. Like she was like, just grab blocks when you need them, essentially. Sometimes she would say like, oh, like use blocks and you can't do this. Besides that, it was a flow and like you were expected to kind of go along with the flow. She also did say at the beginning of class that she will correct you and was basically like, raise your hand if you don't want me to correct you while you're in child's pose. So I don't know if anyone raised their hand. I didn't. She did not correct me at all. I feel like I have like pretty decent downward dog formation, but I was interested to see if she'd correct me for anything and she didn't. I saw her correct one other person, but I don't know like how often she actually did it in the class. And this class today was a lot more empty than yesterday's class. I don't know if it's because of the time, like 1 p.m. on a Sunday, I guess is like a little weirder of a time than like 9 a.m. on a Saturday. Or if Sculpt is more popular, I also kind of get that vibe. The other interesting thing is yesterday, I actually felt like everybody in the room was like using a black mat and wearing black. And I was there with like my purple yoga mat, my like hot pink towel. Like I was wearing like dark clothes, but... I felt very colorful and today I felt like I wasn't colorful enough. People had like all brightly colored things, which I don't know, I thought was interesting. I'm interested to see if that trend continues, but I feel like the instructor was well-informed, did a good class, and that was the first 40 minutes. So then we finish up the second flow and she's like, all right, now we're on to like the core segment. And I'm like, what? Why are we doing a core segment in yoga? And before we were listening to like, you know, ocean sounds, raindrops, like calming, soothing music. And then she put on some pop song and we did a song of core, which was like very random. I didn't hate it. We just did butterfly crunches and then bicycles and then holding a city curve. So it wasn't 
anything super hard. I just felt like I didn't need it in a yoga class. It is nice to like work your core, but I was just like not prepared. I feel like it like didn't flow well. I'm interested to see if other instructors do that too. Like if that's like part of core power yoga too, but that was interesting. And then after that, we still had like 15 minutes left and we essentially just did like stretching really slowly and kind of like wind down movements, which I was fine with. It's like a little long. I would have preferred to have maybe like 50 minutes of flowing because honestly the flow part went by really, really quickly for me. So I liked it. I wish it was longer. And I feel like the first 40 minutes I loved and then the last 20 were like kind of throwaway. So I don't know. Overall difficulty, I would only give this like a seven out of 10 just because there was a lot of balance work, which I do think is difficult. And some of the movements were difficult, but for the most part, it was straightforward to follow like no weights. So nothing that's like super, super high intensity. Enjoyability, the first part I would give like a 9 out of 10. The second part I'd give like a 6 out of 10. So I guess overall maybe like a 7.5 out of 10. And I'm interested to try one more like yoga 2 class just to see what it's like. But today was another good day. I do love a good low impact workout and the instructor again was really good, super friendly and very knowledgeable. It is now Monday morning and I actually have today off for Indigenous Peoples Day. And my company gave us a four day weekend for some reason. So I'm off tomorrow as well, which is part of the reason why I let this be my free week. So I have a little more choice in what classes to take because when I have work, I have a very limited time frame I can take them in. But today we are trying a new class type. I'm excited for this one, a little scared. It is Hot Power Fusion. I'm taking a 9.30 a.m. class, it's an hour long. The class overview is a true blend of balance, core strengthening, and flexibility. Hot Power Fusion combines the meditative detoxifying qualities of hot yoga with the intensity of power yoga to help you deepen your yoga practice. Set to motivating music, you'll focus on yoga postures that open the shoulders, hips, and spine while strengthening your core and upper body. Poses often include standing forehead to knee variation, standing bow pose, camel pose, spine strengthening postures, and hot tree pose variations. Intensity is high. It says it's best for all levels. I feel like every single class I say it's best for all levels. And the sweat level is three, which I think is the highest we've seen so far. Includes added heat and humidity. And yeah, this kind of just sounds like an even more intense version than yoga two. There is yoga three classes listed on their website, but like the studios near me don't offer it. So I don't know, I'm very curious to see what this is like. And I'm excited to do some more hot yoga. We're doing a lot of hot yoga this week. I need to be drinking a lot of electrolytes because I'm definitely sweating a bunch. But let's go to the gym and knock out this yoga class. <laughs> It is so hot in here. I feel like it doesn't come across how sweaty I am because everything's drenched. Like I have no sweat marks, but it's because I'm sweaty everywhere. I am now home. I showered because I was so sweaty from that class. Right when I got there, the instructor was like, yeah, have you taken hot power fusion before? And I'm like, no. And he's like, all right. Just to let you know, like the temperature is going to be even hotter than like Sculpt or Yoga 2. And we're going to be doing slow movements. Try to keep your head above your heart and like feel free to sit down if you feel like you're going to pass out or if you don't feel well. And it's better to like stay in the room if you don't feel well and like take a break than go out because the difference between like the temperature in the room and outside is going to be like even more jarring for your body. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what did I get myself into? So got in, got into the studio. I actually went to a different location today because I wanted to try this hot power fusion and it fit better in my schedule. So it was cool to see a different location. This one was definitely smaller. And then, yeah, I set up my mat and my towel on top of my mat and had my side towel as well. And the other people I came in the class, the majority of them also had towels for their mats. So I'm like, I know this is going to be legit. We're about to sweat a lot. And you could feel it was hotter even just sitting there waiting for the class to start. I was already sweating by the time the class started. And yeah, we got into the class. The first 40 minutes was slow flow, a lot of balancing work. 
And honestly, I think it was too hot for me. I don't really have an urge to like retake another hot power fusion class just because I never felt like I was truly going to pass out, but I definitely felt too hot at times and like I would just take water, take a break, get back into it. But it was just very, very hot. And then I feel like the flow wasn't that hard, which is good because it was so hot. But then like, what's the benefit of doing this yoga flow in such hot temperatures? I guess you are more flexible because it is warmer. Like I was definitely getting really deep into the stretches and it was very low impact, but my heart rate was still elevated just because it was so, so hot. And I'm just like not sure what the benefit is there. But the class itself was good, but I was definitely checking the time a lot just because I wanted to get out because it was hot. If you can't tell, that was my main thought during this class. So we did the first 40 minutes and then we did another core song. This must be a core power yoga thing, but he like changed the music from like calming music to like jam up music. We did very basic core. It was basically the same thing we did yesterday some butterfly crunches, we held boat pose, and we did like some other modified crunches. And then after that, we kind of went into like recovery for the last 15 minutes. So again, very similarly styled to yesterday's class where we did like stretches, kind of like cool down movements, and then we ended in Shavasana. And overall, I think like the class was good, but I think I would rather do yoga too where it's a little bit cooler and a little bit more difficult than this where it's obvious the main appeal of this is the heat which does make sense because it is called hot power fusion but it just wasn't exactly what i was expecting and yeah someone that doesn't do a lot of hot yoga it was very very hot i would not recommend this for beginners honestly i wouldn't say that this is like a class that's open to everyone like they list on the website i would say have some experience with hot yoga before coming to this but it was still cool to try and i really like the instructor i feel like he was informative he had like dots that you took if you were okay with form adjustment so i took one and he did adjust me on warrior two once and i feel like his adjustments were really good like i really appreciate it that's one of the main benefits of going into studio so i really liked that you know, he gave me some live feedback. And then the only other thing I wanted to comment on, which was true yesterday, but I forgot to mention, is the blocks at Core Power Yoga are like not good in my opinion. They are just foam blocks. They're like the blocks I got off of Amazon for like 10 bucks. And I do not like them. I'm surprised that they don't have cork blocks. I honestly think that those really elevate a yoga experience. Equinox has them when you do yoga there. And like I have a pair at home now because I really, really like those above the foam blocks. I don't know, I'm always worried I'm gonna break the foam blocks when I'm like putting a lot of my body weight on them because they do not feel strong at all. So that is a little bit of a surprise, but I guess it's nice that like, you don't have to bring your own blocks, you can use them. But it is important to note, if you are picky about the blocks, you gotta bring your own then, which I don't really see anyone do. So maybe I'm just overly particular about them. But today's class was good. Difficulty, I would give like a six out of 10. It wasn't difficult, it was just the heat got to me so much, but I guess that's the point. Enjoyability, I'd give it like a five out of 10. It honestly like wasn't unenjoyable, but I just feel like I was constantly looking at my watch to see how much time was left because I just wanted to leave and cool down. It is now the next day, it's Tuesday morning, and you know what they say, another day, another hot yoga class. So today I will be doing a 9 a.m. class of Yoga Sculpt, which is the same class that I took the first day on Saturday, but it is with a different instructor. I just wanna try it out with someone new. I don't know if I like yoga sculpt or yoga two more, so I'm gonna take both of them again and see. Definitely not taking power fusion again, but there's one other class that I want to take that I'll take tomorrow because it fits in my schedule better. But that's pretty much it. I don't want to take yoga one just because I think that it would be a little too easy for me. And then the other class that's offered a lot is like restoration yoga. And I actually like restoration yoga, but I just think that that is something that I could easily do on Peloton. So I don't really need to go in and take a class for. I'd rather take something that is hot yoga. The restoration yoga one and the class I'm taking tomorrow is all not heated, but everything else is heated. And I feel like 
going in the studio, you kind of should do the hot yoga. But I did do some research yesterday after filming because I was like, what is the deal with hot yoga? Like, what are the benefits? And it seemed kind of unclear based on the articles I read. Basically, the benefits is you burn more calories because your body is also fighting to regulate your temperature while you're doing yoga, which burning more calories in the moment is nice. But I think a lot of benefits of just regular yoga are kind of like the same benefits as hot yoga. But some people like to sweat. It does feel like you're working really hard because you're sweating so much. So let me know if you do hot yoga. And if so, like what you think the benefits are, I'd be curious. It didn't seem like there was like a lot of proper research into this. But then I also Googled like, can I do hot yoga every single day and it be okay? And the answer was also yes. So I will continue on with my week. And that is what's on the agenda for today. So let's walk to the studio and knock out yoga sculpt. That class was good, but I definitely like the first sculpt instructor more than the instructor today. First off, this class was crowded. I'm pretty sure it was completely full. So just a little bit of a different experience because it is so crowded. And yeah, the music was like really loud. She had a microphone, which was nice because sometimes I still couldn't really hear her. But this was the first time an instructor used a microphone. I feel like the other times the instructors like could just talk loudly enough. And it's odd because this isn't the biggest studio I've been in, but with just so many people, I don't know. It was interesting. It just had a very like different feel to it. I got there, signed in. I was about 15 minutes early again. She really didn't like comment on me being new at all. She's just like, yep, sculpt is in studio one, grab your weights. And right when I came in, I'm like, wow, this is not as hot as yesterday. This does not feel hot at all. It was set at 85 degrees, so it was still hot, but compared to the past two days, where it's been like 95 to 100 degrees, I was like, wow, this is gonna be an easy class. Which she quickly made me eat my words because she did slowly ramp up to 90 degrees like throughout the class. I think probably around like 20 to 30 minutes in, we hit the 90 degrees and then we stayed there. So it was still very hot. I was sweating a lot, but in terms of the actual workout, it was very, very similarly structured to the other sculpts class I took, which makes sense. I like that. You know, the instructors can have their own personalities and their own take on things, but I don't want completely different classes when I'm going to the same class type. So I'm glad it was similar. So started off, did 20 minutes of flow. I actually feel like this instructor did more body weight work and we only did like maybe five minutes of weighted flow. Then we got into, you know, arms, squats, lunges for the next 20 minutes. And then the final 20 minutes, we did like leg work, core, and then stretched out. The stretching out portion was a little bit quicker. I wanna say it was only like five or six minutes, but I feel like it was effective and a good workout. I was sweating a lot by the end, but yeah, I just feel like this happened. This wasn't my absolute favorite instructor. She wasn't bad. The other thing to note is, and this was true in the other sculpt class, she did not offer any like form correction or any opportunity to get form correction, like never asked if you wanted it or not. So I think in sculpt, they don't correct you, which kind of makes sense because it's barely yoga. Like you do a little bit of flow at the beginning, but this flow especially was very simplistic. Like we did almost no balance work. It was like a very, very basic flow. And then you kind of just get right on into weights. So it is interesting that this seems like their most popular workout. I guess it is for people that like want to be yoga adjacent, but not really do straight yoga. But overall today, I think it was just okay. Enjoyability like a six to seven out of 10. I mean, it was still hard, it was a push, but I think I was more in the mood for more classic yoga today. And then difficulty, I would also give like a six to seven out of 10. I didn't think it was super, super difficult. Like obviously you take breaks when you need them, but it was pretty easy to follow along. I was using three pound and five pound weights, which probably is a little light for me, but I'm still getting used to the whole like heated, workout situations. I don't want to like push myself super, super hard on weights, but it was still a good way to kick off this Tuesday. And I'm excited to keep doing my free week. It is now Wednesday morning and I'm going back to work today. So we need to squeeze this class in before work. So I'll be taking the 7.45 a.m 
Core Power Strength X Full Body Class. It is a 45 minute class and the class overview is Meet Core Power Strength X, our high intensity strength training class with a dose of mindfulness. In just 45 transformative minutes, our weight circuit, cardio, and breath work focus sequences target specific muscle groups, boost your metabolism, and train your mind. Exercises to expect, full range push-ups, back rows, dumbbell thrusters, burpees, and jump squats, hit style cardio. The intensity is high, it's best for all levels, and sweat level is two saying unheated and no added humidity, but there is an asterisk that says, while no heat is added during these classes, the practice room may have leftover heat from previous classes, which I think is a little bit weird. Like I get that that might be hard, but like, I don't know, turn on the air conditioning seems odd, but we'll see. I'm very curious to see what today's class is like. It's a little bit shorter, it's 45 minutes. It seems like they kind of try to offer 45 minutes in like the seven o'clock hour, even for like regular sculpt and for just regular yoga because people have to get to work. But I think that 45 minutes is probably a good length. I'm just assuming this is gonna be like a hit strength workout. I really doubt there's gonna be like any flowing in it. It does say there's mindfulness. So we'll see, I'm curious. This does feel kind of like a random offering from core power yoga. But we'll see, I'm going in with an open mind. I did want to try it out. They do have like lower body, upper body, but I wanted to do full body for the full experience. So let's go to the studio and knock out the strength class. I think that class was very okay. It's pretty much what I expected for a strength class from a yoga studio. Like I've definitely taken better strength classes. I think the main draw to it would be if you had an unlimited core power yoga membership and you wanted to get some more focused strength in. But honestly, this kind of just felt like a more easy version of sculpt because it wasn't heated and it wasn't as fast. Yes, you lifted like a little bit heavier, but still I feel like if you want to do strength work in the context of core power yoga, you should just do sculpt. But Essentially, we got there, checked in, everything was fine. I just grabbed the weights that were on the instructor's mats, which was a set of five, a set of eight, and one 12 pound dumbbell. And we got pretty much right on into it. Did like some very basic body weight warm up. You know, I love a body weight warm up. And then we had a first circuit that I believe was five strength moves, and we repeated it once. So we did it two times in total. And it was 40 seconds on, 20 seconds off. And the strength moves were mostly like combo moves. Like for example, we did a lunge where you were also doing tricep extensions. And when you bent your elbows, you also like went into the lunge. And then when you extended your elbows, you like lifted up from the lunge. So kind of getting like leg and arm. And we did a lot of stuff like that. Like we did boat pose, but we were holding a weight and like extending it. So a little bit of arm work, a little bit of core. And overall, I didn't hate the moves. I just feel like they weren't anything super great. Like they were just fine. I'm curious if the instructor writes their own set or if they get a set from somewhere else because there's other like full body classes offered today. And the instructor that I had was like referencing a piece of paper. So I'm not sure there, but yeah, I just feel like the moves are like fine. Not good, not bad. You know, we got through it. It was a hit section. Then we went into a cardio hit section where we did like all cardio moves. So think jumping jacks, high knees, jump squats, like pretty basic cardio, definitely got the heart rate up. We just did that circuit once. I believe it was the same 40 seconds on, 20 seconds off and five moves. Then we went back into our second strength circuit, which was different moves than the first one, but very, very similar. Think bicep girls going into a squat or like some rows and then a push up. And we repeated that one once as well. So we did that twice. And then the final section was just a core section, which was the same exact structure. So lots of planks, mountain climbers, bicycles. I was like, wow, I need to really work out my core. I was struggling on that one. And then we ended with eight minutes left in the class to do cool down. A ton of people left. This is like a popular thing. I feel like at every single fitness studio I've been, people just leave during the stretch. I find that very weird. Like, yes, maybe you have something where this eight minutes will make a really big difference, but then maybe take an earlier class. I don't know. It seems weird to me that you would skip out on the stretching, but the stretching was very simplistic in this class. We did like supine twist and 
that's pretty much it. And then we went into Shavasana, which I felt like was weird because we basically had no other yoga practices in this class. And I just feel like Shavasana is nice after you did yoga and like really stretch out your body and like feel like your body is stronger and like it feels relaxing to go into because like yoga is kind of relaxing while this was like you did a 40 minute hit class and now you're doing shavasana so i wasn't a huge fan of that but we did it the other thing to note about this class that i think makes it a little different than other strength classes is the instructor really focused on breathing which does make sense that does couple with yoga and other instructors that i've taken at other places have like commented on breathing even peloton does but pretty much every single move, she told us like what breathing pattern we should be in, which I did appreciate. That did make it a little bit nicer. Overall, I would not go out of my way to take this strength class at Core Power Yoga. I would honestly just go to like a different boutique fitness studio if you're really interested in like in-person strength. I also feel like Peloton does just as good of a job for this. Like I don't really get a lot. She offered like minor form corrections, but nothing that... I think it was like super, super valuable. But it was still not a bad workout. I got a nice sweat in. The temperature was fine. It was a little warm when we started, but the instructor did have a fan running. And I definitely sweat, but it was nothing like doing heated yoga, right? Like the sweat was normal for me, still a decent amount for anyone else. For enjoyability, I'd give it maybe like a six out of 10. It wasn't anything amazing, but it wasn't horrible either. And the class passed by pretty quickly, especially since I've been doing hour long classes. This one was 45. It went by pretty quick. It keeps it moving. Difficulty, I'd also give like a five to six out of 10. I don't think it was that difficult. I think I probably could have pushed weights a little bit more, but you know, I tried my best, we got through it, and yeah, I need to practice my core some more. It's now the next day, it's Thursday morning, and we are doing yoga sculpt once again. I will be doing yoga sculpt today, and then yoga to tomorrow. To wrap out my free week, I am taking the 7.30 a.m. class, which is an hour long class. There are a lot of 45 minute classes in the seven o'clock hour, but I like specifically want an hour class. I feel like if I'm going to walk to the studio, I want to do as long as possible. So let's go to the studio and knock out my third yoga sculpt class. I was really not a fan of that class. I'm not sure if it's because of the headspace I was in, like I wasn't super in the mood to work out, or if it's because it was really hard. I think a little bit of both because a lot of people around me were not doing the moves either. And it seemed like the girl, the instructor prided herself on like being hard. But we got there, she said, grab light and heavy weights. I grabbed three and five. That's like what I always do for sculpt. I do think that was the right weight. The class itself was very difficult to the sculpt setup. We did some flow. This was literally the most basic flow you can think of. Like think downward dog, lunge, crescent lunge, warrior two, and then circling down again and going into a plank like that was the flow so very very basic which i think is part of the reason why i didn't like it as much because i do like a little bit of challenge on my flow even though i know it's not the focus of the class and then we picked up weights did it a couple of times and then we got into a cardio section we had a core section leg section and that was the class it was quite loud and the instructor didn't use a microphone. So I actually found that it was hard to hear her sometimes. And that was like the first time that I really, really struggled to hear. So I thought that was interesting. This class was pretty full, but yeah, a lot of people were taking a lot of breaks during this. You just had to do things that I think are pretty unrealistic in 85 to 90 degrees heat. Like I would say hold the plank for like, over a minute while pulsing your foot. And the one thing that I hate, and I hate when Peloton instructors do this too, is when there is a countdown and they like count down slowly. Like they're like, oh, you only have like 10 seconds left. 10, nine, 
And it's like, okay, don't even count down then or just say that there's 20 seconds left instead of literally lying to me. Like, I know that's not a second. And she did that constantly. And I actually find that super demotivating. But overall, I did sweat a ton. The temperature was the same as it has been in the past two school classes, 85 to 90. It felt more humid. Like you could see the mirrors fogging more, but I don't know if that was also like in my head or if it's because it was more crowded. But overall, like definitely got a sweat in. It was definitely a workout, but I would not take this instructor again, which kind of is the beauty of getting a free week at this studio compared to a lot of other boutique fitness where you only get one class. Because just because I didn't vibe with this instructor, like I have found other instructors that I vibe with more and would just like take those classes instead in the future. Enjoy Lily today, like a four out of 10. I was really looking at my watch, ready to go. I think I am getting a little burnt out on Sculpt 2. It's a lot to just do hot yoga several days in a row, but I do want to make the most of my free week. Difficulty, I would give it like an eight out of 10. I mean, I was modifying, I was taking a lot of breaks. I just don't know what was up today, if I just like couldn't push through it or if I just didn't vibe with the instructor, but it just felt like a struggle today. So I'm excited to wrap it up tomorrow with a chiller class. It is now Friday morning. We're gonna go take yoga too at 7 a.m. of one hour class. I'm not running late, but I'm not gonna be early either. So let's keep walking. If I had to use one word to describe that yoga class, I would just use lovely. It was such a nice way to end this free week and a great way to kick off the Friday morning. So this class was actually very empty. I think there was only like six people in it, which I was pretty surprised. But yeah, overall, at least where I live in New York, it seems like the sculpt classes are kind of their most popular offerings. But I definitely like yoga too after taking it. But I guess if you don't really like yoga, yeah, you would like sculpt more. But if you just want yoga, like yoga too is great. This was definitely structured as a morning yoga class, which makes sense because it's at 7 a.m. It was such a nice way to wake up. We did a lot of like slower movements first and then got into a flow, which with all of the classes that have yoga in them, they teach it to you like really slowly at first and then you do it in rhythm with your breathing like a couple times so that makes it way faster and i just love doing yoga that way i feel like that's not like super common on peloton or when i was taking yoga at equinox so i really like that structure like i feel like you just get all the moves down really well and then you can like speed it up so we did the same flow for probably around a half hour we did it really slow at first then we sped it up then she added some modifications to kind of like get into it deeper. And it was a mix of things, a lot of balance work, which I like. We did half moon pose, warrior two. We also did a lot of different lunges, like lizard pose. We really got in there and just stretched everything out. Then we got on our backs, we did some bridge pose, some wheel pose, that felt good. We did, you know, lots of bent over work. She gave us an option to go into inversions. I didn't try it today. I was just like feeling the vibes. The temperature was set to 95 degrees, but I honestly didn't sweat that much. This wasn't like a super hard class, but you were definitely like getting into the poses, really like going into them deep. Like it wasn't easy either. It just like wasn't high intensity but it felt really good. Like I just feel so relaxed and like ready to take on the day. This class was easily my favorite class I've taken all week. And if I come back to core power yoga, I'm just gonna look up this instructor and like go to her core power two yoga classes because those are my favorite apparently. And we ended with some nice chavasana. It just felt so nice. And then she sent us out into the world. So overall, I like Yoga 2, then Sculpt, then the Strength X class, and the Hot Power Fusion the least, just because it is so hot. But I honestly think that Yoga 2 is like miles above Sculpt, but it really depends what you want. 
I just think if you like sculpt, you should like explore other boutique studio fitness classes because you could probably find something you would like more. But if it works for you, it works for you. It's obviously very, very popular here. And yeah, don't sleep on the yoga two classes. Like this is called core power yoga. So I honestly think their yoga offerings are the best. For me, I'm definitely ready to take a break from hot yoga. I think doing hot yoga every single day is quite a lot. And I don't know how often I'll take classes from core power yoga going forward, just because they're very expensive to take one-off classes. They're like $40, which I would not pay $40 for that. You do get a discount if you like buy classes in packs or if you do an unlimited membership. But the thing is, if I get an unlimited membership, I will want to go all the time to get my money's worth. But it's like, I don't want to do hot yoga every single day. There's definitely value in, you know, doing other exercise along with yoga. But it is something that I'll keep in mind going forward that I did really like yoga too. And it is something that I'd be interested in taking in the future. And I do think taking yoga too regularly, you would see a lot of like flexibility results, even just after going a week and in the heat, I feel like it does help me stretch out significantly. So let me know if you've taken any classes at Core Power Yoga. And if so, what is your favorite? And also let me know if there's any other boutique studio fitness classes you want me to review. They are like really fun to go to. I do appreciate it every once in a while, but it also makes me appreciate Peloton because it's so nice to just be able to work out from your apartment building whenever you want compared to like following someone else's schedule. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys are staying safe, having an awesome week, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.